Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on this panel on investing in women entrepreneurs. Very glad that you could join. My name is Sunin Kaufman Torkesansky. Um, I lead engagement and partnerships at a late stage VC fund called Bliss. Uh, we're located in both Paris and uh, New York. And I'm very pleased to be joined today by uh, five distinguished uh, speakers that I'll introduce to you now. So first we have uh, Uda Shakiri, who is the founder. Are you the solo founder? Okay, the solo founder um, and the CEO of Enhanced Technologies. Enhanced Technologies is a Moroccan IT company specializing in um, e-government solutions. Next to her, we have Marta Alade. Marta is the founder of Women in Technologies uh, in Nigeria. It's a network that empowers women and girls, and you're helping them, I guess, create job opportunities as entrepreneurs and find jobs. Um, next to her, we have Priyanka Chaturvedi. So Priyanka, some of you may know, uh, she's a seasoned Indian politician, a columnist, and a political commenter. And um, Priyanka, you're also the trustee on two NGOs promoting women and children empowerment in India. And then finally, we have Salma Karim. Salma heads Human Capital and Innovation Department, which is a new entity at the Digital Development Agency in Morocco. It's in charge of nurturing the next generation of Moroccan talent and digital leaders uh, in this country, and I assume some of you are, are in the, uh, the room. So welcome to all four of you. I'm very excited that you can join. We have a little under an hour um, to debate on this topic of investing in women uh, entrepreneurs. So what I'd like to do is split the time in half. Uh, firstly, I'll ask a few questions to the panelists. And then second, I'd like to open the floor uh, to questions from the audience, and I hope that you have some. Um, before I turn to uh, my panel, I'd like to throw a few figures that I think will be helpful to frame the debate. So figure number one, $130 billion. $130 billion. That's the amount of funding that was raised by entrepreneurs across the world in 2018. Out of this $130 billion, 2.2% were raised by women entrepreneurs. 2.2%. If we're turning to India, India or Indian entrepreneurs raised $9.14 billion last year. $9.14 billion, out of which 5.2% were raised by women. So India is doing a little better compared to the average, uh, uh, global average. And then last figure, 1.2 billion. That's the amount of money that was raised by African entrepreneurs last year on this continent. And I actually don't have the figures of, or the percentage of women entrepreneurs that raised because I couldn't find it. So I don't know if it's existing or we're, if we're lacking data, which is also telling, right? One point I'd like to specify is that those figures only include women tech entrepreneurs and not women who have other types of businesses. And the second point uh, is that it only encompasses funding that was raised through venture capital and not through grants or loans or debt funding. So, I think we will all agree that there's a social case for more investment in women, first of all, because we represent 50% of humanity. We're consumers and we're great people, so why not invest in us? Um, but there's also, I think, an economic case that needs to be uh, put forward. Um, and if we're looking at some research that were done in the past 20 years on how women-led businesses perform, the results show that women-led businesses perform three times better than men led businesses. So there's definitely, I guess, an economic case for more investment in women. And yet, if we're looking at the figures, those investments are not here, right? So I'd like to turn to my, my panel and maybe ask each and every one of you, why is that the case? Why are there still so little women-founded uh, businesses in your respective countries? Maybe let's start with Uda. Well, if, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, businesses in general, we have the, those, all those barriers that uh, uh, impede uh, women from accessing uh, fundings. Uh, when I talk about social bar barriers, we're, we're living in a patriarchal society where women are more directed to 
uh, jobs like sales, like, uh, I don't know, human resources, and not necessarily to technical fields, and less to, uh, to be a, an entrepreneur. Those are regarding the social barriers. Uh, we have also political barriers where governments does not encourage disparity or equality in, uh, in, uh, in career, I mean, when we, we talk about men versus women. And we have, of course, the uh, number of women that, uh, if we talk about uh, uh, business women or uh, entrepreneurs in the technical field, how many women in technical field do we have? How, or how many uh, uh, engineers do we have in the technical field that at the end will go and fund their enterprises? All these aspects impact on accessing the funding when, when, uh, 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 when it comes to uh, 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 talking to VCs. Thanks, Marta. Do you want to add a few points? Yeah, I think one big issue is that women is often women are often referred to as a hum, uh, homogeneous group, and that is not the case. So, for venture capital to really thrive and make good impact, we need to understand that um, women need to be categorized according to that uh, to their peculiarities. So, in this context of um, technology, we may want to ask some questions and consider some factors like. Uh, the STEM proficiency of the woman. Is the woman a core STEM professional or is she just using technology in a place of work? We need to look at um, a factor like education. Are uh, the women we are looking at um, well educated or can they hardly read or write or had never at one point in time gone to school? We need to look at factors like their location. Are they located in the cities where they have access to um, technology and good internet, or are they in remote, rural, or underserved communities? And lastly, we need to ask, these women we are looking at, do they even have access at all, or do they have, um, can they afford technological tools and the internet? Because these are very key um, factors that will determine uh, how to address or how to direct venture capitals. And then before, after that, we can now look holistically at other factors that pertains to Africa, like insecurity, like um, lack of electricity, and so on. So when it comes to venture uh, raising funds, men have consistently outperformed women. And one of the reasons is that women tend to be more conservative compared to men who are more daring and usually um, uh, present, uh, overstate their projections when looking for funds. And when they overstate projections, they put bogus figures, it appeals to the investors. And, um, and, and this male-dominated investor landscape tend to uh, favor men more than women. And I wouldn't want to blame it on the men, I'll blame it on society in general. This societal stereotype didn't just start today. We, it is even believed that um, the, prehistoric, the prehistoric caveman was physically very strong. He will go out and hunt for food, take all the risk, while the woman stays at home and fend for the family. And when he comes back, the woman prepares a delectable meal for the entire family. And as civilization crept in and we moved them um, from the first to the uh, fourth uh, revolution with a shift from doing work with human strength to intellectual progress, the human mind remained stagnant. And the human mind did not move along with that change. As a matter of fact, till date, there's no significant change in human belief towards uh, gender roles. And hence, the societal, um, the societal stereotypes remain as it is, no shift at all. So for venture capitals to, uh, or any fund or any type of funding for women to really thrive and make impact, we need to clearly understand the uh, various categories of women and their individual needs. Thank you. Thank you. Priyanka, so Indian entrepreneurs performing better than the average, but still not, not, uh, not enough funding? Um, I think that's a story all across the world at this point in time. However, it's good to know that India is doing better. But I must also talk about the larger picture as far as Indian women participation in 
business is concerned, whether in services is concerned, it is a cause for worry that India has seen a lesser women participation, rather falling uh, participation in the labor force. And while we have economic reasons to have more women participating in the workspace, uh, unfortunately, due to societal pressures, whether it is about the work-life balance that uh, women face, we are having more women drop out of the workspace. And uh, it is interesting to note that women in tech spaces are doing better than women in US and UK. So we, are, we stand at 34% while women in US in technological space is at 23%, UK is at 17%. But that is not something that we are proud of, this is something we need to inculcate. And uh, the three barriers that I see, A is the participation, the societal transformation like she was mentioning, that needs to happen. Uh, thirdly, uh, trying to bring in incentives through policy measures where women feel encouraged enough to look at participating in um, uh, you know, the world of business and especially in this space. Third largest startup uh, country in the world with only 9% women uh, you know, tech uh, startups that we have. So these are things that uh, India has to work upon but however we have some government interventions where through mudra loans, which looks at smaller businesses, uh, uh, trying to provide financial support to women. Uh, we need to create an ecosystem where uh, we have venture capitalists looking at women uh, participation. Also, many women do start up on a brighter note, on a happier note, on a con confident note, but to step up their businesses is where they lose out on because of the financial support not being there. So very clearly we need to have um, when we are talking about a startup India, it is not women specific. Uh, we need to have an ecosystem which is uh, providing the confidence to the women, is providing some kind of mentorship training to women, as al also hand holding them in some kind of policies like it could be through uh, lesser interest, uh, bank loans at less, lower interest rates, tax breaks perhaps, the first three years of their uh, starting their companies. So these are ideas that can you know, push up their participation. But however, we also have to look at the larger picture of women participation in various spaces in India. Thanks, very interesting. You've covered quite a, quite a few points here. Um, Salma, turning to you. A new, I guess a new department being created in, uh, in Morocco to support women, but not specifically, just entrepreneurship in general. What can you tell us about what can potentially be done and also, I guess, the landscape of entrepreneurship and women entrepreneurship in Morocco? Because I think there's not that many figures on it at this point. Well, uh, specifically about Morocco, talking about women entrepreneurship, uh, we barely uh, have 13% of Moroccan businesses led by women. And this is uh, due to all the obstacles that the ladies talked about, socioeconomic uh, literacy issues and uh, awareness and uh, equality. Uh, the digital agency was created in order to implement the state strategy, the state digital strategy in Morocco. It's very new. Uh, the, the, the teams are just joining in, so it's brand new. Brand new. Everything is brand new. And uh, one of the mission is to uh, transform uh, the economy, Moroccan economy, through uh, startups, through awareness, through uh, training through uh, specific measures and uh, of course talking about uh, digital entrepreneurship uh, it could be um, a, a chance for women because we know that it's more innovative it's more accessible it's more uh, flexible even for the the lifestyles that women tend to have in a certain period of their life and in, in their lives and the, the the obstacles they family obstacles they tend to have so uh, we believe in the power of digital in the power of uh, digital entrepreneurship for women uh, in Africa and we, we have some figures to, to illustrate it like quarter uh, quarter um, digital entrepreneurs in Africa are women and this is very important uh, Africa being a very good student in digital entrepreneur uh, in entrepreneurship uh, digital trans transformation could could lead to uh, raising awareness and uh, among the citizens about the chances that digital could br bring them in order to create businesses in order to sell goods in order to transform their lives and even get new skills even getting new skills uh, nowadays it's a form of entrepreneurship so uh, uh, 
ADD is working, ADD for uh, Agency for Digital Develop Development is working right now on the, the roadmap, Morocco roadmap, a digital roadmap, and it will be measured specifically for startups, for digital entrepreneurs, and we have um, a project which, which is called uh, uh, Digital Generation. It will aim to uh, even have plans to transform uh, education and training and professional uh, training also. So that's what I can say about the state. Thanks. Huda, I want to turn back to you. So you were a solo founder of your business. How long has it been running for? Well, I'm, I was the sole founder. I mean, I founded the, the company by myself, but three years after, I was obliged like to open the capital to enable a man to, to access the, uh, the capital. So he, I'm owner of 70% and 30%. When I created, the, to answer your question about when I created the company, it was back in 2005. And uh, it means that I'm in my 14 year of, uh, of creation. And uh, the challenges are, uh, was big since then, I mean, to, uh, till now. We, uh, And specifically, the challenges regarding funding, I'm, I'm, did you fund through, uh, through, I guess, a venture capital or did you use uh, government money? Uh, no, I never went through a venture capital. I, I, I tried many venture camp capital, but never succeeded to have a, a, a funder. However, I, um, I mean, all these 14 years, I kept my company alive, literally alive, and uh, we're not generating billions of dollars. <laughs> But we're alive, we generate some revenue, and uh, we, uh, we change how uh, the e-government works. Uh, um, if not the support, if, you, if we, uh, it was not the support, uh, thanks to the support of my family and my own work, uh, the company would have died like uh, years ago. So that's an interesting fact, because if you look at, I guess, Europe or the United States, when an entrepreneur, and specifically a woman entrepreneur, wants to raise money, she will usually go to uh, venture capital, so a business angel first and then venture capital afterwards, hardly ever turning to any you know, government funding or grant, etc. Whereas it seems like, I mean, and this panel represents it, there are more government people than VC. I'm the only one, unfortunately, in that space. But um, why do you think there's not yet enough VC funding or private funding uh, on the African continent, I think is, is the first one. And the second question that I'll have for um, specifically the government representatives um, is what, what kind of structure of funding do you think would work best to you know, promote women entrepreneurship? Priyanka, <laughs> if oh, I can so turn sorry. to you first. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she, uh, the question was for her. So uh, in India at this point in time, we do have many uh, venture capitalists, but uh, unfortunately the numbers that you were sharing also, it doesn't match up to what women would want in terms of financial assistance. So government policies are something that women look at in terms of uh, scaling up their businesses, etc. And like she mentioned, it's been a struggle for her for 14 years to keep her company alive and not get a single venture capitalist to fund her program. So similar stories exist across the country, uh, not just uh, India, but across the world. So what we have to look at is something which is a good mix of both government intervention as well as creating policies which make it easier for women to get access to funding, as well as have women, uh, this might sound a little, uh, you know, where we are shifting the responsibility towards women, but yes, we need to create an ecosystem where women support networks also come into place and uh, each woman stands up for another to be able to succeed. And at the same time, encouraging venture capitalists to look at women uh, and their businesses. So we, there are many success stories in India, however, they're not enough. So uh, at this point in time, I believe government policies and their interventions would be the way forward for even uh, private funding companies also to look at them as serious business women. Uh, the biggest challenge that women face is having to constantly prove their capability and their ability to be able to uh, win the confidence in terms of getting finance. So I think this is one challenge which uh, women really uh, face. Yeah. 
Thanks. I, I want to turn to you, Marta, because Priyanka, you mentioned this network and this ecosystem. Marta, it's, it's exactly what you created with the, you know, the Women in Technology uh, Network or the Women in Technology in Nigeria Network. So, I guess what was the um, the, the the start of the the start or the idea behind this network? First of all, and then second of all, can you tell us maybe um, two or three um, uh, programs that you may have put in place to actually help women? Uh, promote themselves better, um, be more sure of their skills. Um, and on that note, I guess, uh, it's funny because we're speaking about investing in women, um, but I have a feeling that women are not investing in themselves, first of all. So I'd be very curious to, I guess, have your opinion on, on that. So I'm quite in agreement with what you said, women uh, not even owning up to their accomplishments. Uh, for. Um, I've like, like sh I, I think you were mentioning it, you were talking about it, how men tend to show a sense of confidence, at times overconfidence, when they're selling an idea to uh, someone who will be willing to fund their entire project. Women tend to do that much lesser. So when you have these support networks, when you have a group of women who are supporting each other, you tend to build on that a sense of confidence and own your accomplishment, not having to feel guilty about going out there and seeking money for your project, for your fund, because that's something which is a, a, a baby that you are looking after. So those are things which uh, need to be part, a stronger part of the ecosystem. Of course, there are many such uh, places that exist, uh, 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 networks that do exist, but again, making them accessible for every woman out there to be able to fund her dreams and be able to accomplish the goals that they have set for themselves. So th like I said, starting something becomes easier, but increasing it or taking it to a bigger level becomes a challenge for women. M Marta, do you want to comment on that? Because your network is specifically about that. Yeah, I want to comment on what you just said. So let's be, uh, if we're a bit more realistic, Getting venture capital, uh, it's highly competitive, especially in Africa where you have uh, huge populations concentrated and millions of people going for the same funds. So uh, we should also realize that it's about competence. The, the funds are available for both men and women, and if men prove more competence for the funds, I don't think the capitalists want to put in emotions. So it's just a word to chip in for women that women need to build their competences. And beyond just the funding, there are other things women need to inculcate. For example, um, we talk about STEM, STEM, STEM. Now we are, we are, people are bringing in STEM, that is adding uh, hearts to the STEM. Science, technology, engineering, hearts and maths. Where that arts brings in communication skills, entrepreneurial skills, the social cultural aspect. These are important um, aspects that need to build in to make the woman um, be able to communicate her ideas more effectively, to pitch more confidently, to have that spirit of entre uh, entrepreneurship. And then we must also understand, for example, there are some women who um, probably had been underpaid employment for years and want to go into entrepreneurship. She has been under someone's um, she, now she's trying to become her own boss. She definitely needs some form of training on entrepreneurship, on risk taking, on being able to manage a business. Those are the things that um, um, venture capitalists look, look at that puts um, women off that um, opportunity trail. Thank you. So I just want to maybe start opening the, uh, the floor for a few questions. I, have, I see one over there. Are there mics in the room? Can you introduce yourself very briefly and ask your question? Uh, sure, so my name is Melissa. I am COO of a robotics startup, and uh, more by default, not by choice, but the top three uh, people who are in leadership in our company are all women. And uh, we've uh, gone through our Series A. We're currently in the middle of raising our Series B. And uh, my question is this, you know, I've heard a lot in terms of uh, confidence, um, pipeline, and women supporting women's network, but I think that, 
I, my, my question is this. There was like a Harvard Business Review um, study done about like a year and a half, two years ago, uh, where they had basically had all these like VCs interview different candidates who were all giving exact same like types of like pitches. And what came back resoundingly was that actually when women go and pitch to like VC, uh, men are asked different questions from women. And so the categorically, the uh, questions were broken down into promotion questions, which is like, how you make money, how you can like sell your business, all very positive. And the other type was prevention questions. How are you gonna uh, prevent losing money? How are you going to like save? How are you going to conserve? And I find that like for our team at least, confidence is not an issue. We are no fear. Men actually often come to us in order to get their, their boost and encouragement. But I find that when we come into many of these arenas, before we have even given our pitch, the first things asked to us is like, how will you prevent losing money? We're like, we're making money, honey. Like, you know, we're, we're way past that. And so I think that when we are encountering a, a field where all of the VCs are primarily men, and I'm not blaming, I'm saying that like there seems to be inherent uh, biases. And I think that like it's great to do women's training, learn how to do better pitches, come out with like stronger ethos and confidence and all of that. But maybe the problem isn't on the women's side necessarily because like, you know, our CEO, she's from BC ourselves. We understand that space quite well. Um, but what are ways that, whether from policy side or from, um, you know, within the arena, that we can help people see their own biases and see how like basically if you're going to ask promotion questions which allow you to tell the best of yourself versus asking prevention questions which you know immediately puts you on the defensive and your viewpoint of a startup that's pitching to you will be formulated by what types of questions that you ask. What are ways that we can do to change the space acknowledging that the current decision makers who are holding all, all the funding are mostly men? So it's a great question. So. Uh I guess Salma Priyanka, what she's suggesting is for you to create policies and and uh, and fund investors so that they change their bias. So forget about funding women and and training them. You also need to train the investors, right? Exactly. Well, we um, we tend to uh, all the studies and the. The cases, the use cases, tend to uh, highlight the fact that all the policies and all the measures are men-centered. Like they're like for for men entrepreneurs, not specifically for for women. And uh, I can illustrate with a specific case here in Morocco. We had a gender equality program from 2012 to uh, 2016. It's called Ikram program, and it was held by the Ministry of Industry. And one of the most important pillars of this m measure is to uh, raise awareness and train women because uh, the fear factor is here is it's real it's not about funding it's not about uh, material it's about the state of mind that needs to be changed and of course in a, in a continent as africa and in a country like morocco there is socio-economic specificities that tend to make it harder to to women in order to take the initiative and go and and create a value you. And that's what we, we've done uh, on on four, four year uh, program and it was enabling women uh, in cities and rural women to, in order to create their own projects, to learn about entrepreneurship, about risk, about funding. And that was the first time we, we, we've done this. And uh, we tend in Morocco to have very sectoral uh, policies and measures and we, we don't have specific uh, gender equality measures uh, that, that tend to be, to be like very general. And that's what we're tr trying to implement uh, in Morocco right now in order to uh, give the right measures and try to uh, give a new mindset for, for the women entrepreneurs. But that's still a mindset, uh, that's still training for, for women entrepreneurs, right? Not what she was asking, which is training also the uh, the investors essentially <laughs> to stop being biased towards towards the women. And to your point, I think there there are a few things that can be done. Of course, those men can be trained. I assume more women in an investor's position will help also, um, you know, those bias. But I also want to turn to you, Huda, and, and ask you when I guess when you onboarded some some men uh, into your capital, what was the uh, the the relationship dynamic, and did you have to maybe put in more of masculine traits or did you have to change your behavior to adapt? 
or did you manage to adapt that man to your own style? Uh, I, I didn't have to manage, I mean, I, I have this friendship relationship with the man that uh, I introduced, because if you, you cannot have an associate if you are not friend of him. I mean, uh, you need to have good relationship. So he, he believes in equality uh, uh, principles. Until now, he never intervened in how the business runs. He's just a shareholder uh, to uh, per se. I wanted to jump on what, what uh, uh, the lady just said. I, I agree with you. We, uh, when I, uh, I mentioned my experience uh, with, with venture capital that I, uh, that I got refused for uh, or three or four, or, or, or four times, the first time that I, I, uh, I uh, submitted for a venture capital, I, I wanted to pitch. And do you see that I, ha I lack of confidence? I'm a woman who. I mean, to go into entrepreneurship, you, you should be a strong woman. You should be confident of yourself, your ideas. <laughs> I mean, when I, I pitched, I was preg seven months pregnant. So I'm sure that I got refused the, this, uh, this capital because in, in the mind of the venture capitalists, they said, okay, she will ha uh, give birth in three, or, uh, or, 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 uh, in three months. How, how can we trust her? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a matter of trust. We don't trust women. Uh, we don't trust, believe in, their, in what they can achieve in, in, in few years. Everybody has this bias of, uh, or uh, this uh, stereotype of women taking care of children uh, uh, and, and uh, at a, uh, a certain age uh, or, or uh, uh, at a certain time uh, giving up and, and taking care of the family. This is the first uh, venture capital. The others, it was not because I was pregnant or, or that I have children. I didn't mention that because I was like, uh, like this. But it was because they did not believe that I could, because the, 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 the company runs, I mean, develops software for local government. And I was not fighting only the stereotype of, uh, of the equality, but also the digital divide, because I was bringing solutions to local government who is working on paper based. So the venture capitalist said, well, I, we need a man who can face the political decisions decision makers to be able to sell the, the, the good. However, 10 years ago, we were able to still sell our product to decision makers. However, I did the turn. I mean, I was sending men sales <laughs> to sell the, pro the product. But when, when approaching the venture capitalists, you need to pitch yourself. You cannot send men to pitch for you. So this is just to, uh, to, uh, to jump on what you said. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Okay, so to answer your question or to contribute to that, I think um, the first one um, way out is advocacy. Now that you know, begin to make statements, write about it on social media. And when people who are doing something that is not too right, you know, see such publications, I think it could um, make them have a change of heart. Then another way out is those few eye flyers that are women uh, investors can come together and begin to um, and make a deliberate um, decision and intervention to empower more women. So if we have uh, women investors come together, they can decide to empower women looking at the, their weaknesses and, you know, mentoring them and empowering them. So an, another way out is looking for um, influencers and empowering influencers. So when you empower influencers, that is someone who has uh, the ability to influence more people and bring more people to scale up people who are at the bottom of the pyramid to the top of the pyramid, you see that as time goes on, we are having more women uh, investors. So some influencers include women who are uh, leaders of associations, teachers, that's another uh, part of the game, teachers and community leaders and so on, and that can help solve the problem as well. We have another question at the front. Sure. 
My question is about um, the you fund. Introduce yourself. Or sure. My name is Ankit. I'm a technology editor from Bombay, India. Um, my question is about the characteristic difference in a business run or founded by female entrepreneurs versus their male counterparts. I'll give a quick example. Dating apps, everyone's heard of Tinder, started by a company called Match.com. That's the parent holding company. Mostly a bunch of just men, horny men, who decided to come up with a dating app. Uh, counter to that is another app called Bumble, which a woman uh, who quit Tinder, completely disillusioned by this boys gang, boys club that's happening, and she founded uh, the business. To the end consumer, um, I don't know if there's a perceptible difference in a product which is designed uh, or led or founded by a woman and something which is run by men. But this is just one tiny example. So I'm trying to understand because one of the things you said in your opening remark is that women run or women founded startups uh, perform 20 times or 20%. Three times better. 20 times better in, in revenue. That's a remarkable statistic. Only a dumb blind VC would say no to a track record like that. So uh, the question is, is there some characteristic difference in organizations run by women and by men. So you have two questions in one. The one is, is there a difference in the way the organization is run, so the VC is being run? And the second, based on the example that you, that you gave is, uh, are the products different as well, right? Yeah. So there, there are two questions in one. Uh, I'm slightly biased. I think the products are always better, but <laughs> it's, it's no, just but my is there empirical <laughs> evidence for that? <laughs> well, let me turn to the panelists first, and then I'll, I'll, I may give you an example. Is, is anyone, does anyone want to comment on that or not? Maybe I should have done it. Go for it. Um, so I think your question with regards to women doing, A, women doing better, is an established fact as per the statistics, <laughs> right? The second part being uh, being or just able to in general in life, right? <laughs> Absolutely, in all roles. <laughs> so uh, secondly, about uh, women being able to uh, convince the end user as well as the VC that they'll be able to do a better job of it. This is exactly where, where she, uh, her question and your question merge, where she says men come, the VC usually comes with an inherent bias that would a woman be able to do better? Would her project be able to give him the money, the returns that he's seeking? And uh, that is perhaps the reason that barrier, that a woman uh, entrepreneur is unable to cross or somehow convince. Now this is about, again, the mindset change that needs to happen. And the mindset change cannot come through government policy interventions. It has to come through social activism. It has to have civil society participation. And women, enough number of women in these workspaces to be able to become a norm rather than an exception. So these are things which I believe uh, would be able to bridge that entire gap. So when you say a VC has to be an absolutely dumb person or blind, I, I, I disagree because that person is only looking from the point of view of how he would be able to turn around his investment into handsome returns. So it is a, a barrier which a woman needs to cross along with the mindset that needs to change. That's the best I could perhaps, uh, you know, answer to this particular question. Huda, did you want to add something on it? If you want to, yeah. Uh, I cannot say what is the difference, I mean, be between how women conduct an organization or men. However, what I believe in is that, like, I'm considering my company just like my first child, because I created it before having child. So I consider it, uh, I mean, the fact that I consider the company as my own child, I protect it, I try my best to enhance it. I mean, I do all what is given uh, to me as, 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 as opportunities to make it succeed. Just like, I mean, this, this is this kind of instinct that, the, uh, that a, a, a woman has. Uh, other things say, that don't forget that when we are accessing this opportunity to run an organization. We, we don't do as much as men. We do double what men do to achieve what they are achieving now. So maybe the effort shows in the statistics. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, give two examples to answer your question. The first one on how organizations are being run, um, you know, men versus, versus uh, women. I think uh, women are, are more caring by nature, and uh, um, I don't have the statistics in, in head, but um, um, a, a woman-led organization or an organization that has quite a lot of, of women creates a certain nurturing environment, which... Uh, ultimately is more beneficial to the company because people do want to go to work because they feel that they're being cared of and therefore there's much less turnover. And if you look at an early stage venture, you know, human capital is essential. Um, so, so I think in terms of how an organization performs overall by um, maintaining the human capital that they have, uh, women-led business or women-owned or founded business um, is, is, I guess, the, the nurturing environment plays uh, a, a positive role. Um, in terms of design of products, I don't know if you're aware that I think um, uh, there were like 20% more death uh, on the roads by like women, more like um, women were dying on the roads uh, than men uh, overall um, in the world. Why is that? Because uh, the men designed the cars and when they were designing the uh, security uh, seat belt, um, they only took the body of a, you know, a, a man, so like 70 kilos uh, middle, you know, uh, hates, etc., um, to design the security belts um, without taking into consideration the body of a woman. Um, and that had a, an amazing consequence in terms of, you know, the amount of death on the roads, right? So in terms of, of producing and design, um, the fact that a woman is at the helm of a business also creates products that are more designed towards women. Um, so it's important as well. Is there any other question? Oh, hi, my name is Omi Mahanzawi. I'm a civil engineering student and a political activist. And uh, my question is, uh, as a young woman, uh, what are the difficulties that I can face uh, while creating my own startup? And uh, how can the concept of, the, of uh, crowdfunding help me to develop uh, my startup? Thank you. Salma, do you want to take this one? <laughs> this is almost a philosophical question. I mean, we need uh, maybe a big book to answer this. But as a student, thinking about entrepreneurship is already a good indicator because it's, it shows that you are aware of, uh, of the uh, employment mar market, of the digital probably trends and uh, economic trends. And this is a good, a good point. How to grow uh, a startup uh, as, as, uh, as a student, it takes, um, it takes uh, innovation. Uh, I'll probably um, suggest that you uh, enter program, uh, PhD program, uh, research and development in order to develop, uh, to develop a, a startup that has uh, scientific and innovative uh, value because uh, we're in the, this trend of copy-paste uh, models and uh, uh, the, the model that works in Europe, we bring it, we adapt it and we sell it here. So we need, we need to raise innovation our own innovation, because Africa is, is, uh, is known for its human capital. We have excellent African people who, who, uh, who are like very well um, introduced and uh, in, in Europe, America, and whatsoever. But we need that the people here do the same effort in order to implement innovation. And that's one of the, the, the missions of the Moroccan Agency for Digital Development is to uh, empower people in order to think about innovation. That's the first step. It's, if we start thinking about it, then we, we're going to be doing it at some point. So uh, that mindset uh, change. I, I'm not able to tell you as a woman what you should want, you should do this, Two, three, uh, I will become a billionaire by selling a book and everyone is, will be creating uh, this successful startup. It takes, uh, um, it takes conviction. What do you think about your career? What do you think about a project with sustainability, with value, with innovation for your country? Uh, what is your roadmap as a, as a human being? A lot of philosophical like question you need questions you need to ask yourself. Being technical, uh, there is a lot of uh, empowerment uh, program for women in Morocco. There is uh, some programs for for entrepreneurship, 
uh, you should uh, just visit websites for MAUC PME and MDU and, and uh, hopefully ADD also, we're having uh, programs for startups. Let's just exchange our, <laughs> our contacts and talk about it. Go on. <laughs> Um, I'll ask one last question because I, I think we're running out of time, but and we've all spoken about, you've all spoken about uh, more training needed to be provided to, to women. Um, so I have maybe like one personal question that I'd like to ask each and every one of you. Have you ever had a mentor before? Was it a man or a woman? And what's the, the one single thing that that person has, has brought to you? Um, and if we can start with you, uh, Salman, then we'll go, we'll go down the line. Well, hopefully I did have mentors, they were uh, men and women, but uh, having a woman mentor, it gives additional value because it's it's more like, uh, it's like that motherhood, we can see it through uh, the work, through business. We, we have that instinct, uh, which is I think a, a very competitive <laughs> competitive advantage compared to, uh, to, to men in order to run businesses, to manage crisis, in order to be more transparent, uh, more uh, into sustainability, because we women are not uh, profit-centered. We tend to reinvest, we tend to uh, think sustainability, and that was the difference between my, my male mentors and women mentors, because um, they tend to be to follow more, to give more, and try to uh, be more uh, strategic and long-termist in, in, their, in their attitude. Priyanka, in your career as a politician. <laughs> <laughs> How I wish I could answer that uh, and could say that I had women who were my mentors, but unfortunately, unfortunately that's not the case in India. We have women leaders, but unfortunately they're not mentoring other women to come in these spaces. This is the unfortunate truth of India right now. Uh, however, uh, I believe uh, even men have become sensitive to making space for women. However, a little more sensitization is needed and uh, for them to understand that women come with their set of um, challenges. They come with their set of, um, um, I would say, um, capabilities and strengths which they can best use to ensure that uh, they can contribute in political spaces. So um, I wouldn't say I have a, I've had a male mentor, but uh, I'm a female mentor, but male mentors have been sensitive enough, but they need some more sensitivity in the system really. Men in the room, I hope you heard that. Marta? Nana political. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wouldn't really say I've had a, one particular mentor, but I have women in my country that I really looked up to, and their lifestyles and how they uh, run things, run their businesses that have really uh, challenged me. But I. On the other hand, uh, I'm quite a men I'm, I'm a mentor to several uh, women, and I'm happy to say that I see their lives being transformed, their businesses um, growing. For example, there there were some group of uh, group of women. Let me quickly cite this example that um, needed funding, but um, they were not literate. They couldn't read and write. They were in remote communities, and the funding was not there. So, however, I and my team, we mentored them and told them that at that point in time, it wasn't funding they needed. They needed to get their businesses online. And so we volunteered and brought some of their businesses online. And today, a lot of them, their businesses have grown by over 400, 500% because even in the remote communities where they were, people were able to reach them through their uh, mobile numbers and even place orders from outside the country. So there are groups of women like that that I have mentored and it's really gratifying. Thank you. Well, I, um, I, participa I participated in, um, in like two mentorship program, the Cherry Blair uh, Foundation program of mentorship and I didn't finish it. I will tell you why. And uh, the Tech Women program, where I visited the uh, Silicon Valley, and I had a, 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 a cultural mentor and a technical mentor. However, I mean, it's really very difficult to talk about mentorship to an entrepreneur, because difficulties that an entrepreneur face, uh, face, uh, faces 
differs from an individual to another individual. We cannot have the same challenges. We cannot have the same solutions to problems that we face. So this is why mentorship, we cannot talk about mentorship, but rather role modeling. I mentored also some young entrepreneurs, and the impact was more cultural than uh, than I mean in their businesses because I might I mean when mentoring you might change completely how the entrepreneur see things and ruin his his career. So I rather uh, go for something like role modeling, and to do that, uh, it's the role of media. It's the role of showing uh, good success stories to young ladies to be able to. Uh, I mean, uh, see themselves in that in that in, in that role modeling. If you ask me now to participate in a mentorship program, I mean, to mentor young young ladies, I will say no because I, I will say no because I have other things to do. I need my uh, to to make my business succeed. I ha I don't have time. <laughs> Why should I give time to a young lady? She needs to face her. I mean, it's not from a selfish point of view. I'm not selfish. I, I, <laughs> I, I'm ra rather realistic. I mean, I, I want to name things. I mean, it's, it's the role of the government. It's the role of uh, to prepare a good ecosystem for all entrepreneurs, not only women, and then tackle in parallel these equality uh, uh, problems. Thank you. Um, you spoke about role models. I think there are four amazing ones on the uh, on the stage. Oh, do, do we have uh, time for one more question, or not at all? No. Okay. So I'm sorry. <laughs> so we'll have to cut it off to that. But uh, yeah, four uh, amazing women who hopefully are good role models uh, to people in this room and, and people watching us. Um, thank you for sharing your your thoughts uh, and for I guess the businesses that you're running and the effort that you're uh, putting in creating ecosystems that are supportive to entrepreneurship in general and. Uh, women more so in, in particular. So um, Huda, Marta, Priyanka, and, and Salma, um, please join me for a round of applause and thanking them.